I'm honestly not terribly familiar with the whole Sonic universe. I played what I think is the third of the original games, and I watched both shows when I was younger. You know, the crappy, lazy, weird, we're all high one, and the dark, developed, serious one that had actual characters that had more than one dimension to them. I do know enough, if not from anywhere else, then at least from like buzz and, you know, screenshots and such, that several other characters from the universe appear in this in their Arthurian form. In any event, this is one of the first times I've played a Sonic game that was in three dimensions, and I still pretty clearly remember how it was in two dimensions. You know, straightforward, fast, exciting, fun. I remember one of the first attempts at giving it a third dimension, and to this day I think it's one of the slowest, least like its predecessors games that I've ever played. They got the color right on Sonic, I think, more or less, and the environments were still, you know, colorful and bright, cheery. But other than that, now I might be mixing it up in my head with Load Runner 2, but I think it is that kind of, you know, you move one space at a time, you know, side to side, or not even sure you can do diagonally. Anyway, it was a mess. It wasn't fast, it wasn't fun, it just had a third dimension and the recognizable character, and that was it. It's nowhere near as bad with this game, but it is really clear that they did not have a really good idea of how you make the old familiar 2D gameplay work in 3D, if there is indeed a way to do that well. Basically what it amounts to is the levels are entirely linear and that's fine. You can't always back up, sometimes it'll just, you know, you won't be able to move backwards. And that's basically how I remember it from the old one. But now that there are three dimensions, you also won't always be able to tell exactly where you're gonna go when you move forward. For example, if you move towards something and you appear to reach a dead end in that particular direction, Sonic may either turn to the side and then just keep going in that direction, with you still just pressing up to proceed ahead, or you may have to climb up. All of what I've said so far is basically minor and really doesn't prevent you from enjoying this, at least it shouldn't. But here come two things that make this very awkward. You can just barely go to the sides, and you can't properly tell how much you can move to the sides. It literally becomes very difficult to move just a tiny bit of way on the screen just to pick up something that is literally right next to you. This also seems to... This also can't quite decide if it wants to speed you ahead or make you proceed gradually and sort of slowly. Now the other thing is the sword play. Don't get me wrong, I love sword play, I love fencing, I love swords, lightsabers. If it's got a hilt and a blade, it doesn't even have to be a long blade. I like daggers too. Bottom line, you put a bladed weapon in a game and you have to really make it suck before I'm not gonna at least consider if not buying it then renting it something to play it. That was why I bought this game and I'm not unhappy about that decision. And the sword play isn't bad as such. It's really just that much like I just said before about the general gameplay, it can't decide if it wants to speed ahead. Like, at times you'll be just running through and just swinging the sword and taking out enemies with one fell swoop, and they'll fall by the wagon load. But, and other times, the enemies are like there to slow you down, and then other times, you can't really move ahead before you fight. 
I mean, I hate to say it, but it says Sonic right there in the title. Why am I ever standing still in this game? Now, for any fellow fencing enthusiasts out there, the sword operates somewhat like it does in LEGO Star Wars, with one infinitely important exception. I'll be completely frank with you. I'll be completely honest with you. I did not enjoy LEGO Star Wars all that much. It just did not get me engaged. I mean, you're working with Star Wars and you can't make it any more exciting and epic and fun than that? Are you kidding me? Part of that was that whenever you were on foot, you moved slowly, very slowly. And whenever you swung the lightsaber, you were basically standing in place, just slowly swinging the lightsaber. It almost moved as slowly as it did in the Phantom Menace game, which to me was actually a more fun game than LEGO Star Wars. And anyway, that game is over 10 years old. I realize that LEGO Star Wars isn't brand new, it's a couple of years old, but still. For crying out loud, if you want fast lightsaber action, look no further than Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast from 2002. Just don't take any inspiration from the story, because that aspect is kind of a turkey in that game. Anyway, back to Sonic. The difference here is, you can actually use it while moving, and in general, the sword moves really, really fast. But yeah, you activate it by swinging the Wii mode, and like LEGO Star Wars, it doesn't mimic your moves, and you'll be using it quite often and sometimes for extended periods of time. My right shoulder has not forgiven me, and it's been two whole days since I even touched the game. The controls are quite simple. Honestly, probably too much so. It's too limited. You only have so much control over what you do, and frankly, too often I found that Sonic wouldn't do what I was trying to get him to do. For example, there's a double jump where if there isn't an enemy right nearby you, you'll sort of float for a little bit. And this is immensely helpful for clearing your average bottomless pit. However, if there happens to be an enemy near that pit, you might instead sort of home in on the enemy, which might very well lead to your untimely demise in the Wily e. Coyote sort of way. In the sword play, you can also block, but it looks really odd. It'll sort of stick your sword out in front of you, and this cone will appear in front of you. I suppose this was to ensure that no one would mistake the defensive move, and enemies s sometimes do it too, unless they're using a shield. But yeah, and you can't use it for terribly long, which is fair enough, and you have to be standing completely still, and you can't move until you stop defending. You get to do some pretty cool moves in the sword play. One that stands out has Sonic sort of doing the familiar in the air, spinning like a saw blade kind of thing, only with the sword, you get the idea. And eventually you get to use three other styles of sword play one of them with a sword in each hand, but on the whole, it's just kind of too random what sword move you're gonna do. And frankly, the sword play is kind of reduced to you just waving your arm to attack whenever you meet an enemy over and over. And that is where LEGO Star Wars kind of has the upper hand on that. Because in that, at least it doesn't go on for as long, and in boss fights you have a couple of other moves which you'll be spamming, but enough about that game. This being a Sonic game, of course the most fun you're going to have with it is when you're just speeding through areas, and here's where the three dimensions and the very free camera helps a ton. There are some really grand areas where the camera flies with you and really gets your adrenaline going. 